Nuclear power makes up a large part of the energy supply mix in Ontario. Since it's the only large-scale energy producer that is low-cost, reliable, and zero carbon emissions. It provides us with reliable and carbon-free energy. There are no emissions uh, that would contribute to the climate change. Only 10 of these nuclear pellets power your home for an entire year. It also benefits the health sector. At Bruce Power, we harvest medical isotopes, which are used for diagnostic imaging and cancer therapies. So it was the mystery and the technology, and I joined the Security and Emergency Services Department at OPG in 2003, right when things on a global scale were changing, so lots of new opportunities in the nuclear industry there. I love the technical nature of this industry. I love the dedication of the people in this industry, the resilience that they show. It was the opportunity that our company would have in the nuclear industry, making the polyester PVC coated suits that go into the vault. We we figured that being an Indigenous company, it would make sense for us to be in Bruce County servicing Bruce Power. I got the opportunity to work on a refinery acquisition team and it was then that I knew that I wanted to stay in the energy sector and utilize my technology and uh, business skills together. It's a clean technology and so I was very attracted to actually participate in that and work from within the industry to demonstrate good performance for the electricity sector. I intended to become a doctor. I went to pre-health pre-med and unfortunately I was terrified of blood and kept fainting in biology labs. So I walked over to the next faculty over and I asked a few questions and within two weeks I was an undergrad in engineering. So when uh, the Pickering first unit on the B side was undergoing commissioning, we had to take radiation area surveys to get a baseline of what the radiation fields were, leading a team that needs to be mobilized. And I always remember that with great fondness. I'm speaking at the Abu Dhabi uh, Women in Nuclear Conference in 2016, absolutely petrified. I looked out and it was just enormous. It was like 850 odd people. And, it was uh, actually very frightening on one level, but it was really cool. This past summer, um, I had the opportunity to go to MIT down in Boston or Cambridge for a month, study nuclear technology. Spent time with um, really smart nuclear professionals from all over the world and learn more about our technology. Just last year, we took a delegation to Romania and we signed a memorandum of understanding with a sister organization in Romania is on my trip to Argentina, where they just refurbished a Candu reactor. I was able to be right in front of the Calandria after it was fully refurbished. It's really the heart of the reactor, and I got to stand right in front of it before it was turned back on. To run up the turbine and sink the generator to the grid, actually having your hand on the breaker that closes when you sink to the grid is a real excellent feeling. The first time I did it was probably one of the highlights of my career. It's celebrating, celebrating the women who have come before us. Celebrating people's accomplishments. Celebrating women. Celebrating success. It's a call to action. It's an opportunity to talk about where we're at. Currently, we're 200 years away from gender parity when you look at women in C-suite leadership positions. So we need to talk about that, and International Women's Day gives us an opportunity to do that. I believe that without a diverse group of people running companies or working on a solution, you won't come to the right solution or the right answer. So it's very important that we create these diverse workforces. I think through International Women's Day is that I have a responsibility to give back mentor, share my experiences so that females can flourish uh, well into the future. We recognize and celebrate the achievement of the female and uh, women around the world, for instance in the nuclear industry and at OPG. I think International Women's Day for me is a time to stand back and reflect on the successes that women have had, but also to reflect that we're not there yet. And it's an opportunity for people like me to give back to women so that they can be successful in their careers as well. When I was nine years old, I actually went to visit my family in India, and I have an aunt and uncle that we stayed with. Both are doctors. I spent a day with my aunt going to a clinic that she used to work at nearby. I saw a lineup out the door of both women and children waiting for her. I really just looked at her and I said, how can you do all of this? Why are you working so hard? She looked at me and she said, 
those people who were waiting for me, she said majority of those women would have never gone to see a doctor if there wasn't a female doctor there. It was the first time in my life that I really understood the impact of having women in certain professions. My female hero is actually my mom. Definitely have to be my mom. My mom, Queen Elizabeth I. But she made England a superpower. And so I think on so many fronts, she was such a great leader. And more than all of that was that her legacy survived many centuries. Yeah. So very often I'd look back and I'd go, wow, I wish I could talk to her and see uh, what inspired her. But my mom too is the best. Anything to do with science, technology, engineering, or math, the world is exploding now with possibility because of the technology that's going to support every single one of those disciplines. And I think if you were to work in a STEM career, you have the ability to really differentiate yourself. You're coming in with school from experiences and skills out of university that are going to catapult you above people in the workplace that just don't have those up-to-date skills. Create your own opportunities. If you have an idea, you have something new to share, or you have an alternative pathway to getting to somewhere, you have to really share that with your boss, with your managers, with the other people on your team. Go for it. Don't let anything get in the way. Don't put yourself down based on other people's inability to see your value. There is a place for women in nuclear. Uh, they need to own it and be confident that they have a role to play. There's a lot of opportunity for women in STEM and we have a lot of really positive role models working in STEM fields in the nuclear industry and the opportunities are endless so stick with it and the world is your oyster. There's a lot of opportunity to grow within the nuclear business so whether you start as an engineer you can end up as a CEO. I would say not be so rigid on exactly which program will lead to what particular role in the future. I think part of the excitement and part of the drive and motivation that can be created with going into the unknown is actually a good thing. There's ups and downs in, in your career and there's ups and downs in life, but you know, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason and just take a deep breath. Forget the negative self-talk that worries if you're as good as others. Just do it, do your very best and prove to others that you've got what it takes. To not wait and not be shy to raise your hand and say that you want an opportunity to do something new and different. Take a chance, take a risk and get out of your comfort zone. There's really no race to the top. You need to take your time to do what you need to do at that time of life that you're in. Don't look around, don't look at your peers and don't compare yourself. Advocate for yourself. During your career, you're going to have a lot of successes. And oftentimes, especially when you're a woman, you wait to be recognized. And I find that is sometimes a mistake that we make too often. Let people understand the accomplishments that you've made and talk about them. It's okay to talk about them and leverage that to progress in your career. We are the women of nuclear. We are the women of nuclear.